to be able to just make a choice on your own and just be able to speak for yourself. This one's wife. Deport Prince Harry. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Lucy Winky writes in something called Slate, Trump's right, we need to deport Prince Harry. She writes, Donald Trump has done everything he can to elevate the so-called migrant crisis to the centre of his electoral project. The former president has always employed the occasional fascistic flourish when he speaks about the families who cross the southern border. But the keening diabolical malice he's hitting as the 2024 cycle ramps into high gear is sicker and starker than ever before. Trump has promised to withhold municipal benefits from the children of migrants born in the United States, has threatened to activate the National Guard to assist in mass deportations, and hasn't been afraid to get frighteningly blut und bodeny when he outlines his reasons why he thinks America can only thrive if it is impermeable by immigration. They're poisoning the blood of our country, he said in an interview in October. Unfortunately, Trump's appeals to our inner hatred do appear to be resonating with a large swathe of Americans. The border, at least, is a top issue for a polarity of American voters. I have found all of this stuff to be profoundly distressing and disappointing, writes the journalist, especially when you consider how much of the Democratic base, including President Biden himself, has demonstrated a willingness to placate hawkish fears about the border. After his attempts to work with Republicans in Congress on an immigration bill failed, the incumbent is reportedly mulling an executive order that would heavily restrict asylum for those who cross into the US over the Mexico border. It's quite clear to see where the politics of this particular journalist sit. That isn't really the point here, but it is useful, of course, to provide context to the individual's remarks. She continues, however, on Tuesday, for the first time in his political career, Trump said something about immigration that I think we can all agree on, and it could honestly serve as a compromise platform between Republicans and Democrats. Prince Harry should be deported. We all know it. What are we waiting for? Now, pausing there, this is interesting. Because you've got a clearly democratic, I beg your pardon, democrat individual who is left-leaning in their politics and is clearly a critic of Donald Trump. That's not the purpose of this video. But the fact is that somebody who ordinarily might hold themselves out as being tolerant, perhaps compassionate, somebody who's on the side of migrants, certainly is agreeing with someone that they ordinarily would not agree with, Donald Trump, that Prince Harry should be deported. That, although it's just the view of one journalist, demonstrates just how far the popularity of Prince Harry and this one's wife has fallen within the United States. Leaving aside the fact that he's married to a citizen of the United States, leaving aside that one of his children apparently was born in the United States, and leaving aside the fact that he's made it his home, this journalist, who you might otherwise expect to show a little more compassion, agrees that he ought to be deported. She states, Trump made this assertion in an interview with Nigel Farage one of the UK's foremost psycho-conservative wing nuts. They were speaking about Prince Harry's best-selling memoir, Spare, where the former royal and current Los Angeles socialite admitted to bumping a few lines of cocaine in his life. Those who apply for US visas must disclose whether they've ever used illegal drugs, and Farage asked Trump if Harry was found to have lied on his application, if perhaps Harry claimed to have never spent a suspiciously long time in a bathroom stall, would that mark him for a potential removal from American territory? Trump coyly replied that Prince Harry would not be the beneficiary of any special privileges, and that if he lied, 
the Department of Homeland Security would have, ta- would have to take appropriate action. It goes without saying that deporting someone for something as harmless as getting coked up at Buckingham Palace is monumentally stupid, cruel and a flagrant waste of resources. However, the spirit of Trump's larger point is completely sound. Prince Harry moved to America and immediately revealed himself to be the most annoying person in the oligarchy. He is coasting on a ridiculous endowment, itself supported by literal centuries of exploitation, despite his possessing no skills, attributes or insights to speak of. Of course, those points can also be levelled at this one's wife. In their absence, Harry has been forced to wield his sole remaining asset, the ability to whine, which again is also could be levelled at this one's wife, to whine endlessly about the various low-stakes indignities thrust upon him by his dad and brother until he managed to worm his way into California's celebrity enclave. Spare, his turgid memoir, sold 1.4 million copies, and it mostly contained passages about all the trauma he has from getting mildly bullied by his older brother. You could not waterboard that information out of me. What an embarrassing way to become famous. Everything about the prince reeks of pervasive mediocrity. Again, something that's just as applicable to his wife. He successfully convinced Spotify to hand him and his wife $20 million for a podcast, which resulted in 12 episodes. He broke ground on a charity, raised $13 million from his rich friends, and managed to redistribute $3 million of the net holdings, which seems a little off. The charity also includes a for-profit media arm, their first production, a Netflix series about, you guessed it, Harry and this one's wife. The Duke of Sussex will continue to defraud the nation's greasy tech industry plunderers for as long as he's left to his own devices. Want a national rallying cry? Send his ass back to England. I'm telling you, man, this is a great opportunity for Joe Biden. It's an unsteady time in America. People are out for blood. Chaos is in the air. But if we could just refocus some of that rancor a little bit away from the brutalised men and women at the border and onto someone who truly doesn't belong here, maybe we can throw a bone to the swing voters who have suddenly found themselves hungry for deportation. Biden should be bolder than to file those measures based on Harry's juvenile coke habit. After all, considering what's popping up at the White House, that might be the one thing he and the prince have in common. No, Biden should be foreclosing Prince Harry's American era because he is a clear net negative on the cultural ferment. Who knows? Maybe he can convert the Royals' $14 million Montecicchio mansion into some much-needed temporary housing while he's at it. Thus, no sympathy whatsoever for Prince Harry, and by extension this one's wife, and agreeing with President Trump that... He ought to be deported. This is another voice adding to the clamour for him to be removed. And also, somebody that you might think would be sympathetic to them, identifying that Harry and this one's wife are pervasive mediocrity, that they're useless, that they are essentially a clear net negative. This one's wife and Harry now go hand in hand with regard to their endeavours. And this one's wife, although she won't see it this way, ought to be concerned by the fact that there is a growing clamour for the deportation of Harry, naturally, because that's her husband, and more importantly, her meal ticket. Therefore, were it to be the case that he were deported, this would pose a huge problem for this one's wife, because absent Harry, she's a nobody. She's only known for being his wife. She's only known as a consequence of the fame that she's obtained by being his wife. Nothing to do with suits. It wasn't that popular. And therefore, as she has attempted repeatedly to make herself relevant and failed, stripping him from the United States would make it particularly problematic for her. He is an extension of her That's how it works with the narcissist, and therefore the removal of Harry would also feel like an attack upon her. 
She would, of course, seek to nullify that by suggesting that Harry is the problem of himself and that it wasn't down to her and it may well hasten his disengagement and causing her to find somebody else. But it tells you something about the lack of popularity of both Harry and this one's wife that when you have a left-leaning journalist such as this one agreeing with President Trump, you really ought to realise that you are wholly unpopular, not wanted, and you might just want to leave of your own volition. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.